speaker, as most of you know, is uh, Caroline uh, Winton Rhodes, who's going back for a term deal. We enjoyed the last one very, very much, and she's going to tell us about her father this time. So, Caroline, step forward. Okay, most of you remember the last time I came up here, I decided to talk about uh, my flying family, and on the last occasion we spoke about General Theodore Osterkamp. Uh, as you can see, he was a general in the Luftwaffe, but he also happened to be my grandfather. But this time we're going to talk about my father, who was DFC AFC, and we can see him here as a Sunderland pilot. But the question that, asked, because, um, that must arise, how the hell did this man become my grandfather fighting in the Luftwaffe when this guy is also, as I said, my grandfather, but this man is my father. So let's look at the situation how these two guys were fighting on opposing sides. Okay, there is my grandfather in 1918. Now ladies, you have to look at him and you have to say, but he doesn't look too bad, actually, does he? <laughs> he looks quite interesting. So how did my grandmother meet this guy? Well, in 1919, at the age of 19, my grandmother went off to Belgium on holiday. A very independent young woman. She, was, uh, she had her childhood sweetheart who had fought in the, um, in the trenches during World War I. And she decided that she wanted to go and see where he had been hanging about during the First World War. So off she went, and she ended up in Belgium and in Brussels. And while she was there, she met this guy. However, he wasn't in uniform at the time. He was just a person in Brussels. So she rather fancied this guy, and eventually she fell in love with him. And, of course, eventually it transpired that he was a German. But as we all know, in 1919, anything German was not very popular. The royal family changed their name from Hanover to Windsor. Battenberg changed their name to Mount Batten. And even dogs were renamed. German shepherds became Alsatians. <laughs> so as a result, everything was done to try to persuade my grandmother to ditch this guy. However, it didn't work. When two people are in love, you try to drive them apart, what does it do? It drives them back together. So as a result, they got married, they went off to live in Germany, and my mother, grandmother fell pregnant. Now my grandfather was away a lot, chasing Bolsheviks, fighting them, which left my grandmother on her own. So as a result, my great-grandparents great persuaded my mother, grandmother to return to the UK for the birth of a child. And as a result, my mother was born in 1922 in Caerphilly in South Wales, and eventually my grandparents were divorced in 1925. This then became a very, very, very dark secret. My grandmother then eventually married her childhood sweetheart, and this guy disappeared totally. Absolutely, he was the black sheep of the black secret of the flam family, bury him under the um, under the carpets, which is what was done. However, in 1970, when I went into the Royal Air Force, I was positive vetted, and the um, special branch had fun with me when he told me about my grandfather. <clears throat> I said, no, 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 you've got the wrong family, you've got the wrong people here. And they said, no, it's yours. And it was. <laughs> Anyhow, we're here today to talk about my father. My father was born in 1916, and he went into the Air Force at Halton. He was a Halton brat, and Halton, of course, as you can see, is still there today, training apprentices. He uh, was 16 when he went into the Air Force in 1932, and um, he went on to become an engineer, 
and eventually he had acquired the flight engineer's brevet. At the beginning of the war, he went on to uh, Sunderland's, which we all know were spending most of their time out over the Atlantic, just searching, flying around, boring as can be. Nothing really happened. And so it went on for quite some time. Throughout the war, he was hardly doing a thing. As you can see on the aeroplane, there was a crew of 12. This is just the pictures of a crew. My father is not in that group. Eventually, though, he was commissioned, and they offered him a pilot's job. So they sent him off to Canada, and he got his pilot's wings. However, because he became now commissioned and was a pilot, he did not return to his original squadron, but he ended up flying with the Canadians on the 423 squadron. This is where things started to change for him a little bit. And he had his times as well with the, with the old Sunderland. He managed to have one blow away on him and land on the, on the beaches, which resulted in him being court-martialed. <laughs> However, it was just a slap on the wrist. He was, in fact, believe it or not as well, shot down over the Bay of Biscay while out searching for German U-boats. He was shot down by a Focke-Wulf 190. They got right down on the water. This aeroplane came in and really made a mess of their aeroplane. As a result, they crashed. Everyone on board the aeroplane managed to get out and they were in their dinghies, wondering whether or not they'd be picked up by a German U-boat, sorry, a German E-boat or a um, RAF rescue launch. It was neither. A walrus came to the rescue. <laughs> So anyway, they all survived and they all got home and they continued with their flying of the Sunderland. Now this picture is my dad's favorite. It's a picture of um, a painting that was done for him. And as you can see, the Sunderland is operating out of Gibraltar. The guy who painted it for him thought he was doing my dad a favor, but my dad never flew camouflaged airplanes. They were always white. But he didn't care. It had been done lovingly for him and he's had that painting hanging in his house until the day he died. Now, those, of, those who served in World War II did of course get their medals, and the normal ones that everyone received would have been the 1939-1945 star. Also there you can see the Aircrew Europe star with the Atlantic bar, the bar relating of course to all the flying that he'd done out over the Atlantic. Also, we have the uh, Defence Medal and the War Medal. At the side there, of course, we can see the DFC and the AFC. So, how did he get these? The AFC. He was uh, flying along one day in a Sunderland out over the, uh, over the Atlantic when a problem arose. And the flight engineer on board the aeroplane decided it would be a good idea to see if he could resolve this problem so off he disappeared to see what he could do. In the process, there was a minor explosion on board the aeroplane which took the flight engineer out. So here they were now out over the Atlantic, no flight engineer, so what should they do? My father immediately handed over control to the co-pilot and said, I'll do the flight engineer's job. After all, that's what he did for years. So he handed over control of the flying of the aeroplane to his first officer, took the engineer's job and got the aeroplane back on the ground, back on the water, safely, and as a result, he was awarded the AFC. His DFC, then, was another matter. He was awarded the DFC for, for the sinking of uh, a German U-boat. He felt that that DFC was awarded unfairly. There were 12 of them on the aeroplane. They all contributed to the, the sinking of the U-boat, and he felt that that metal should have gone to them all, not just him. He felt that was unfair. At the end of the war, my uh, dad was discharged, but he re-enlisted again in the rank of flight lieutenant, where he remained until 1953. The last posting he had was out to Aden. He was the station adjutant for Maxa. And um, he left the Air Force, as you can see there, in 1953. And he went into the civilian world. His life was no longer exciting, but it was worthwhile for him. And unfortunately, at the age of 65 years old, 
he died of cancer. The nice thing is that he was given a military funeral by the Air Force Association. And my father was very important to me, and I thank you.